All right, so welcome back. <clears throat> so day 20, the chosen 40 days with Jesus devotional continue. Today we're going to talk about a different kind of peace. We're going to start out with a reading and starting in Matthew chapter 10, starting verse 34. But before we jump into this, we're going to ask the Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shonda Hearth, O loving Master, the pure line of your divine knowledge, and ope the eyes of your mind, that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn, so after having conquered civil desires, we may, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thanking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. But you are Christ our God, you are our light, and to you we give glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Oh, how I love your laws, meditation all day, words and land to my feet, light to my path. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers are those who hear the, hear the word of God and do it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, this ages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, welcome back. So the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. All right, so starting in, out here in Matthew 10, all right? So we're going to talk about a different kind of peace. So starting in verse 34 here in Matthew 10, it says... Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he, and he, who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my, for my, for my sake will find it. He who receives, he who, he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So just before his violent death, his most violent death on the cross, right? Christ promised peace, what, to his disciples. But the existence of evil, right, known as spiritual warfare. The earth to which Christ came under the authority. So the earth to which Christ came under the authority of Satan, right? Because what Satan is the God of this world. So let's look at John chapter 12, verse 31. Verse 31 it says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of this world will be cast out. So Satan is the ruler of this world. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Whose mind the God of this age has blinded? Who did not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So, Satan is the God of this world. 
It is therefore essential what, that Christ wage war, what against the leader of the vice, with weapons, what a virtue. You can see that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 18, it talks about spiritual warfare. Let's look at Luke chapter 12, verse 51. So Luke 12, verse 51, says, Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not all, but rather division. There are two kinds of peace. The false peace to which Christ refers here is a shallow harmony that results from ignoring issues of truth. Genuine peace is, rec is reconciliation to God through faith in Christ and surrender. And surrender to truth. Genuine peace has division as a boycott because not everyone wants truth. In the fallen world, divisions are necessary for truth to be manifest. Right? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 18 and 19. Verses 18 and 19. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. So we see in verses 35 and 39, it talked about bearing the cross. To carry his cross, a true disciple must be ready, if necessary, to sacrifice what even his family relationships. So let's read those verses again and talk about this. Starting verse 35, it says, I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his wife, his life, his life for my name's sake, will find it. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That right there is talk is talk about the faith of Abraham. A true disciple, right, of Christ follows him, does his will, right? And then, and if, if 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 it has to be, what sever ties to sacrifice for, for one's own faith, right? Those sounds like extreme times, but that is how important our faith should be. That's what Jesus is saying. So Jesus wants you to choose His faith, right? The faith you have in Him, choose Him, right? The treasures in heaven. So that's internal, right? So as we saw in verses 40 through 42, it said, he, he who receives you, he who receives you receives me, and he who receive, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He receives a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall, he shall by no means lose his reward. So apostles are what? Ambassadors who, who represent the Lord. Therefore, all who extend help to them are showing mercy directly to Christ and, and will receive God's reward. And also read Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. In the bless, they plaque. They give an explanation for the verses that we just read. It says, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against his mother, and the daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, and a man's foes sh shall, shall be they of his own household. So it says, Harmony is not always a good thing. 
While separation sometimes is, the sword then is the word of faith which serves our, bo our bond to our families and relatives when they hinder our pity towards God. For he does not tell us simply to separate ourselves from them, but only when they will not come with us, and especially when they hinder us in our faith. Right? Verse 37 said, He that loveth the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth the son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Do you see when it, it is that we must hate our parents and children? When they want us to love them more than Christ. And why should I speak of father, mother, and children? Here, what is even greater than this. Interesting. It's from the blessed day of black. So verse 38. He that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever he says does not re renounce his present life and give himself over to a shameful death, for this is what the cross signified to the ancients, is not worthy of me. But since there are many who are, there are many who are crucified, such as robbers and thieves, he added, and follow after me. That is, live according to my laws, right, to his ways. Verse 39 said, He that findeth his, his life shall lose it, and he loses his life for my name's, my name's sake shall find it. He who pampers his life in the flesh appears to find his life. Well, in the fact, he is losing it by sending it to eternal punishment. But he who loses his life and dies, not as a thief or one who strangles himself, but for Christ's sake, he is it that saves his life. So verses 40 through 41 said, He that received me, received me, received me. And he that received it, me, received him that sent me. That he received a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He incites us to welcome those whom Christ sends. For he who honors a disciple of Christ honors Christ himself and through him the Father as well. But we must welcome righteous men and prophets in the name of righteous men and a prophet, that is. Because they are righteous men and prophets, and not because any protection or aid of the sword which kings provide. But even if man should have, have the appearance of a prophet, but in the conduct falls short, you should still receive him as a prophet. And God will reward you for having received a true prophet. For this is what it means. You shall receive a righteous reward. Or you may understand it in another way. That he receives a righteous man will will himself be counted as a righteous man and will receive the reward which the righteous receive. Interesting. Some old writings of the blessed Aoplak. So verse 42 said, And whoever shall give to a drink unto one of the little ones and a cup of cold water only in the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, you shall in no, no wise lose his reward. Lest anyone use poverty as an excuse, he says. If you give even a cup of cold water because he is my disciple, you receive reward even for this. He who gives a cup of cold water is also he who teaches one burning with the fire of anger and desire and causes him to be, to be named disciple of Christ. The teacher will not lose his reward. Interesting. Interesting. Let's move on to the devotional. All right. So it says, in addition to teaching, the peace keepers will be called children of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. The Son of God informed the disciples that he didn't come to bring peace. Instead, he brought a sword. How do these two teachings go together? Well, first, we must re re rewind all the way back to Isaiah's prophecy about the incarnation of Christ. Centuries before Mary was visited by the angel in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The prophet Isaiah foretold for two Unless a child is born, and to us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God Everlasting, Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Check. Now fast forward decades after the Prince of Peace told the disciples they didn't come to bring priests. John commended his gospel with his mini manifesto. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. Then followed up with, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1, verse 14. Jesus is the Word. Check. Around the same time, give, give or take a decade, the Apostle Paul instructed the Ephesian church 
to combat spiritual warfare by putting on the full armor of God. Among other mandates, he said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. The word is the sword of the Spirit. Check. Beautiful. Next, consider the promise found in Hebrews. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit of the joint and marrow and, the dis and dis dis discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The sword divides and judges check. So imagine if written the word of God is sharper than any edge, double-edged sword, and can divide between soul and spirit. How much more do the incarnate word of God defy, def, divide the people he dwell among? Although Jesus came to bring peace to the hearts of those who believe, John chapter 14, verse 27, peace on earth wasn't his objective to the earth. He brought a sword because he brought the word. Then he sacrificed himself to pierce the hearts and expose the thoughts and attitudes of mankind. In that regard, the Prince of Peace was a verbal powder cake, and even some of the closest family members were blown off as a result. Enemies will be made because of Jesus. Check. Nonetheless, disciples were instructed to strive toward peace. It wasn't a contradiction because they, because they were not the word that divides or the sword that judges. They were his messengers, which is why Jesus instructed them to to let their peace rest on those who were willing to receive the message and to shake the dust off their feet when people wouldn't listen. Matthew chapter 10, verses 13 through 14. Beautiful. And we are to do the same. Christians are not, are not called to be powder cakes. No. Blowing things up in the name of Jesus. Our commission is to go, what? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. One of the things Jesus commanded his children to do is to make peace and allow him to be the one who divides. That is beautifully written, because that is true. Right? We are the salt of the earth, right? Salt and light go together, right? We are to be the peacemakers, right? That passage is sometimes taken out of context by many people who read it, right? Because we are supposed to be peacemakers, right? Jesus is the one who judges and, and divides. Let him be that, right? Not you. That makes sense. Let's move on to the prayer focus. It says, Pray Jesus for being the Prince of Peace who came with a sword. Ask God to help you understand and accept that built intention. Pray for the people in your life who do not know him yet that they be won over by the peace he offers every human heart, right? It's true. He really is a peacemaker, right? Internally as well, too. With me, it's true. I can be frustrated and still have that internal peace, right? I can sometimes be angry and still have internal peace, right? Because the Bible says it's okay what to be angry, just do not sin, right? It's okay to judge, but judge righteously, right? Don't judge according to flesh, but we judge what according to the Spirit, right? I mean, so. So question number one, moving forward, question says, do verses like Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36 tend to bother you or encourage you? Well, When I read those, no, right? It makes perfect sense to me because sometimes the truth divides people, right? I mean, that's the thing. See, Christ is the truth, right? He's the way. So it makes sense, right? But sometimes I think a lot of, a lot of people sometimes don't understand, right? The faith either. So I think it's our job to help them understand too, right? So something like this doesn't happen. All right, so let's go on. So question number two, it says, read John chapter 14, verse 27. Describe the peace that Jesus offers and compare it to what the world offers. So let's go to John chapter 14. Let 
verse 27. It says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So peace was a customary, what, Jewish word for both greeting and farewell. Right? Shalom, shalom. Perfect peace is brought by Christ, who reconciles humanity to God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Peace is part of that traditional greeting of Christians to, to each other. To see Romans chapter 1, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. And the greeting, peace be to all, is offered many times during the liturgical services of the church. So read, read and describe the peace that Jesus offers and compare it to what the world offers. Well, the world offers us no peace. That is true. Jesus, on the hand, offers peace all around. Right? But you got to develop that relationship. Right? You'll, you'll, those who follow me know I always say, and once you, if you decide to follow me, I always say, you know, religion is for man. Right? I hope that makes sense. Right? Christ is... It's for those who pick up the cross, follow him. Christ is a relationship. Right. You know, that's the thing. Religion is for man, right? Man can go through the motions, even with religion, right? But it doesn't mean that their heart is right. So that's the thing. When, when, when somebody says, oh, you're religious, I always say back, no, I have a relationship with the one true God, the existing one, right? So, that's the thing. It's a relationship. You've got to build a relationship with him, right? Don't just let it have it built on emotion or feeling or a one-time declaration by mouth, right? No, you got to build a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? And you've you got to let him be the, the manager, right? The time manager, the organizer. The Holy Spirit's your advocate, your counselor, right? Comfort and spirit, true, right? So last question says, practically speaking, what does being both a messenger and a peacemaker look like for you? Well, for me, I've become a messenger, right? Been sent here to teach what sinners his ways so that ungodly can turn back to him, right? Been told to feed the lambs, tend to the sheep, right? Peacemaker for me, you know... I've actually come a long way in that, I mean, considering how far I have come, considering my background, being a combat vet, dealing with PTSD, right? But I always say Christ makes us everything we're not, right? That's what really it means to be born again, right? Become that new creation. That's what it truly means to be born again. A lot of Christians throw born a, they, they, they throw that around, right, like loosely. What it really means to be the new creation is that your old life no longer exists, if that makes sense, right? If you're if you're following Christ and you're still living the same life, right? Then you're not really a new creation, right? No. You crucify the old, right? And you're a new creation. You're still going to mess up. You're still going to sin again, of course. But you're not going to live this former life that you live because that life is dead. It's, you nailed that life. The former life has been nailed to the cross. Or you should have, right? To become that new creation. That's what it means. Right? right? That's what it means. You know, it's a radical shift, right? When we repent, go through forgiveness, reconciliation. It's like a radical shift the way you used to be. Right? You no longer do stuff you no longer you live for him is what I'm saying once you know you become that new creation you live for him it means you hunger for him because you know that he is the only one that can satisfy you and that is what that new creation is it's hungering for God so he can satisfy you right? it's building that one-on-one -on -one connection with God through prayer fasting almsgiving right doing good shunning evil doing what he tells you to do what is written in this book it's Loving with, with everything you have, right? With everything you have, you love him. You seek your treasures in heaven, right? You love your neighbor. You do good to your enemies. You pick up your cross and you follow him. 
even, even if it came to the point of death, you follow him. That's what it means to follow Christ. Right. And that's where we're going to end. So this is what the nice passage was about, a different kind of peace, right? Let him, right? Let him be the divider and the judge, right? We are to be the salt and light of the earth. We are to be peacemakers, and we are to continue the footsteps of the apostles and the disciples. We need to go out baptizing everybody in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? We got to continue to make disciples, right? I have came across something on YouTube that said that discipleship and apostleship takes away from salvation. That simply is not true from, we, from what we just understand, right? We have to keep it going in order to get people to salvation, right? Salvation is that free gift that we have to accept, right? We can either accept or reject, right? We want people to accept, but really, truly accept, right? Pick up the cross, let's get busy. And that's where I'm in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, God, you spoke to your divine saving words, illuminate the soul sinners, comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, truth, and serious of faith. And to blame his life and conduct without reproach in Christ our Lord. And to be glory of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The sages, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The sages, amen. Oh, how the laws of meditation all day words land to my feet, like to my path. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that sees from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers of those who hear the word of God and do it. Lord Jesus Christ, and a God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, and a God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, and a God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace, name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Right? Keep seeking him. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. In the sages. Amen. Jared Wesley Campbell, good evening, good night, good afternoon, good morning, good day, whenever and however this message finds you. Peace be with you all. JPC Spiritual Talk, never hold back, no excuses, right? Build that relationship. Right? Build the foundation of the rock. The rock. Christ is the rock. Build that foundation on him so you don't get blown over when the storm comes. And believe me, there's a storm brewing. It really is one brewing, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Build your foundation on Him. That's all I have. I'm out.